Hello and welcome back to another lesson in simple harmonic motion and what we're going to learn in this lesson is how the potential and kinetic energy of the system changes during time period t and if you sum up the potential and kinetic energy at various times you can also establish how the total energy of the system will change well as you move ahead what you'll find is that the total energy of the system actually remains constant which should not be surprising to you since the system is also following the law of conservation of energy that is if there is no friction in the system so the potential energy stored in the spring is given by the expression pe is equal to half kx square well we know that we can rewrite this equation as pe is equal to half k into a square cos square omega t plus phi and this is obviously coming from the lessons we've learned earlier and if you're doubtful about this i would suggest you go back to the earlier two lessons before you come on to this lesson so we can rewrite again this expression as pe is equal to half m omega square because again we know from the earlier lesson that k is nothing but m omega square into a square cos square omega t plus phi we can also write the kinetic energy of such a system as equal to half mv square where v is the velocity of the block which is connected to the spring and we can Reterm this equation as ke is equal to half m omega square a square into sine square omega t plus phi. Again, this is coming from the earlier lesson. All we have done is substituted the velocity uh, that we have derived in terms of sine function over here. Now, the total energy of such a system would be nothing but e. Or the mechanical energy which is equal to nothing but potential energy plus the kinetic energy and if we go ahead and substitute these two values say this is equation one and this is equation two if we substitute the expression for potential energy and kinetic energy over here what you'll get is e is equal to half m omega square a square which we can take out and inside we can retain cos square omega t plus phi plus sine square omega t plus phi and we know that cos square theta plus sine square theta or cos square of any angle plus the sine square of the same angle is nothing but one so we find that the total energy or the mechanical energy of the system is equal to half m omega square a square so if a system has a certain amplitude and a certain angular frequency then the mechanical energy of the system is fixed and it does not change well you could also write this as this is equal to half into k into a square because we know that m omega square is nothing but k so this is an important expression we have where the total energy of the system is equal to half k a squared. Now let us go ahead and plot the energy values on a, let's say a displacement energy graph and I'll just explain you what a displacement energy graph is. So when the mass is at plus a when it starts its journey so the x value let's put it as plus a what should be its potential energy well we know that at this point the mass is stretched to its maximum therefore the potential energy of the spring should also be maximum and if you substitute the value of uh, x as a in this equation what you'll get is potential energy is equal to half k a square in fact if you substitute the value of t equal to zero in this equation as well you'll get the same answer half k a square because cos square of 0 would be 1. Well, what should be the kinetic energy of this mass when it is at extreme right? We know that at extreme right, the mass is stationary. It's just about to start its journey. So the velocity is 0. And therefore, the kinetic energy should also be 0 over here. Well, when the mass reaches the equilibrium position or is at a displacement 0, what should be its 
potential energy we know that when the spring is not stretched that is it is at its equilibrium position the potential energy becomes zero so we'll go ahead and write the potential energy as zero at equilibrium position and we also know that when the mass passes the equilibrium position it has gathered a lot of velocity in fact its velocity is maximum over here and if you actually substitute the value of t the small t as capital t upon 4 because one fourth of the time period has elapsed what you'll get is kinetic energy equals half m omega square capital a square or you can say it's half k a square so let's go ahead and write this as half k a square what happens when the mass is moved to the extreme left or the displacement is actually minus a once again we know that the spring would be compressed to its maximum and therefore its potential energy would also be maximum and if you substitute the value of x as minus a over here you'll find the potential energy is once again half k a square and if you go on to calculate the kinetic energy what you'll find is that the kinetic energy is zero because the masses once again come to rest when it is at the extreme left position well if you were to plot these values that is x versus PE and X versus KE, you'll get a graph something like this. And in fact, let's go ahead and plot these values. So we see that at X equal to A, uh, potential energy is maximum, which is half K A square. So let's say this point is half K A square. So, and we also know that the kinetic energy is zero. What happens when the mass is at equilibrium position? We see that the potential energy is zero, but the kinetic energy now is at its max and it is half Ka square. So let's put the kinetic energy here as this dot over here. What happens when it is at the extreme left position or at minus A, once again, its potential energy is at the max and therefore it's represented by this dot but the kinetic energy is again zero. So the kinetic energy at minus A is zero. So let's go ahead and connect these dots. And what you'll find is that if you actually connect these dots, if you have some more data points between A and minus A, the graph would be something like this. And if you were to connect, same for kinetic energy, the graph would look something like this. And what you'll find is that at any given point of time, the total energy, that is the kinetic energy plus the potential energy would be represented by this line, which is nothing but E value. So this is your kinetic energy. This is your potential energy. And this is the total energy, which is nothing but the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy so let's say at this point the potential energy of the system is this and the kinetic energy of the system is this then if you add these two arrows the height of these two arrows they'll add up to the total energy e over here and this would be true for any other point between a and minus a in fact let's say you are not given the potential energy graph you are given only the kinetic energy graph and the total energy graph then at any point if let us say this is a kinetic energy you can comfortably say that the balance height between this line and this point would be the potential energy because the potential energy and the kinetic energy should add up to the total energy or the total mechanical energy so what we can say is that the springiness of the spring that is actually represented by k is what causes potential energy to get stored and the inertia of the mass is what provides a kinetic energy to the mass. In, in other words, the system has part energy stored in the spring, which is a potential energy, and the other part is in the block, that is a kinetic energy. Well, we can also use this equation where this is the kinetic energy at any point, this is the potential energy at any point, and this is the total energy which we have just derived over here. 
So we can use this equation actually to find the value of v at any given point of time. And if you actually solve for v, what you get is v is equal to plus minus root of k upon m into under root of a square minus x square. And the plus minus sign essentially indicates the direction of the velocity. And you can actually test this equation by putting various x values and you'll get the correct answers. So if you were to put x is equal to, let us say, a, what you'll find is that at x equal to a, v becomes zero, which makes a lot of sense because we know that at extreme right, or for that matter, extreme left, when you put x equal to a or minus a, the velocity is zero because the mass is stationary at the two extreme positions. And you can also see that at x equal to zero, at x equal to zero, v becomes equal to under root of k upon m times a, which if you recall from the earlier lesson is equal to omega a or the maximum velocity. And we know that at equilibrium position or when x is equal to zero, the velocity of the mass is at its maximum because its potential energy has become zero over there. It's got converted into totally kinetic energy and therefore the velocity is maximum. So let us now simulate one complete cycle of the mass and see how potential energy and kinetic energy changes with time. Well, you can see that as the mass starts moving, the kinetic energy is zero because the mass is at rest and the potential energy is maximum because the spring is totally stretched. And as the mass moves to the left, the kinetic energy increases and the potential energy goes down. And at the middle, the mass has maximum kinetic energy and zero potential energy. But as the mass starts moving away from the equilibrium position to the left, the mass again starts gaining potential energy and losing kinetic energy till the potential energy becomes maximum at the extreme left and the kinetic energy becomes zero. And then the mass again starts moving to the right. Okay, let us now see how displacement x, velocity v, acceleration a, potential energy u, and kinetic energy k changes as the mass oscillates over several cycles. Again, do not try to see all the graphs at one time. Take two graphs at a time. See how the kinetic energy changes with velocity and how the potential energy changes with position x. Uh, well, you can pair any two graphs and see how the value changes as the mass oscillates. So here you go where you have all the motion parameters of the spring mass system shown in one single place. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos.